everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are so excited today to have one of the stars of this weekend's movie, Boyfriends of Christmas Past. Uh, we have Ish Morris here. And Ish, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So what we like to do with our guests is we like to ask you, how did you get inspired to get into acting? What inspired you? Uh, so it's a bit of a roundabout way. I grew up in the Cayman Islands. So uh, there we didn't have a ton of, 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 uh, influence as far as like things being filmed there or anything that you get the odd thing. Uh, but out of nowhere, I, I, I was trying to impress a girl and she was signing up to a play, a uh, musical, the pirates of Penzance. So okay. I signed up as well, just to, to pretend like, you know, I was, yeah, I'm cool. I, you know, if you can do it, I can do it. Uh, and surprisingly, I got the, the role as the pirate King, uh, no way instantly Indeed. instantly terrified and uh oh what have I gotten myself into um but it ended up being this amazing experience of course I was so young they had to to pitch up all the vocals by like two octaves because you know I hadn't <laughs> my voice hadn't hadn't lowered yet um but it ended up being this this amazing experience and it kind of opened my uh my eyes to a different world uh and then I ended up going to uh acting school in New York City and uh, from there, here we are. I uh, started wow. out. Yeah. So that was when you were in middle school, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. We man. Paris Penzance, huh? <laughs> yeah. <was> the... <laughs> yeah. So are you a singer? Do you you sing? I I, I sing. Yes, I do sing. <laughs> I don't know if I sing, awesome. amazing, but I sing. Yeah. Mom still has, has a video of that somewhere in the world. Oh my gosh. Get it on YouTube. It'll no, no. <laughs> I will die with that video. <laughs> That's great. I love hearing stories like that because I mean I loved being in just I mean, I just was a a, a group performer in uh in my high school theater, but it was such a great empowering experience. And I hope that that people get that experience to at least give it a try and see sure. uh, what you like. And I think that sometimes they, they keep it too, the casts are too small. They don't let enough kids experience it. So they, then they don't know that they sure. like it or not, or that they're good at it. Yeah, no, I was, I was like, I was quite a shy kid. So mm -hmm. had I not done that, I don't know if I would have necessarily broken out of my shell. It took me mm -hmm. uh, being kind of thrust into this thing and having yeah. to to stand in front of people. And, and, you know, they say, I think they say most people's biggest fear is public speaking. So yeah, it's, it's essentially the same thing. Fear it's, it's number one over death. Death is two. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Hey, yeah. there's a Seinfeld bit about that where he's like, that means that the average funeral <laughs> person would rather be in the coffin than oh, giving the eulogy. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Spot on. <laughs> But I think a lot of actors that I've talked to are kind of on the shy side, which is because you think of it as such an extroverted profession. For sure. But I think there's something about uh, playing parts that kind of surprisingly you end up a lot of shy, more shy personalities. A hundred percent. And it's a little bit of an, you know, you, you get to not be yourself for a while, I think. And, and you know, it's very easy to maybe... Uh, pretend you're this you know outgoing guy and all that but the minute the cameras are off then people tend to uh yeah go back yeah. to being, uh, you know maybe a smaller personality although some actors are just out there and, and sure. you know, yeah yeah <laughs> so being raised in the Cayman Islands which hashtag jealous I I love the ocean uh, but when you are in like Canada does it just make you crazy all that cold weather um so right around now to, you know, February, I start wondering what, why I've made these decisions, yes. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's nice to try and just get away a bit and, you know, go on a bit of vacations when you can. Is your uh, family still there? No. So I have, I have tons of uh, friends, like my family's a bit all over the place. I have a whole bunch mm -hmm. of uh, friends there, but I've got family in Jamaica and all over. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. But I'm a I'm a I'm an ocean baby to the to the core. Mm. So I There's I don't. Nothing I love more than the ocean. Yeah, me it's, too. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's great. Well, do you remember the first role that you ever got? I mean, aside from your Pirates of Penzance uh, performance. I, yeah. So on, the, on film. The yeah. Yeah. Like so the first thing I ever got was just mm-hmm. a commercial where I was just like a skateboarding cool kid. Oh, really? uh, I was so excited. Yeah. Um not a great skateboarder, but you know, I, I could look <laughs> really cool holding it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, my first role was in a show called, uh, missing, I think. Yeah. It missing or 1-800 missing. And mm-hmm. I was bag boy number one. And oh, nice. I had one line. It was don't shoot. <laughs> and I nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually we watched it, uh, uh, a couple months ago and, and it wasn't as hard to watch as I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you, when you got the role, even though it was small, did you just like freak out? Oh, I can't the, believe it. Yeah, yeah. It's not small to me at all. It was the biggest right. thing in the world. And you, mm-hmm. I was over the moon about it. Mm-hmm. And then I went on to get a couple other kind of one-liners and every one of those was the biggest role in the world to me. <laughs> I was so excited. Yeah. I, I, I think remember- everybody should have that, that thing you do moment. You're like, oh my gosh. Totally. You know? I remember the day I got to sit in, you know, like the, the cliche actor's chair you know, and yeah. I, I was blown away. I didn't have my name on it or anything, but just right. sitting in the chair, I felt I, I was Tom Cruise as far as I was yeah. concerned at that point. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so uh, when you were in the Christmas Chronicles, hmm. did you get to meet Kurt Russell? I did. I didn't, sadly, yeah. I didn't get to work with him, but uh, mm. I got to meet him on like day, I think two, um, uh, just in our like wardrobe fittings and all that. He was there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but he did nice things. He would send like uh, craft things to set and, you know, like send us kind of fancy snacks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. yeah. But that, that That's movie cool. in general was such, it was such a great experience. It was the first time I got to do uh, like work with CGI. So all the, the little elves mm-hmm. and the thing, which was oh, such yeah. a fun experience because you've really got to, you know, imagine where these things are and they would do things like throw sandbags at you. So you <laughs> kind of react to those. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was such, such a blast. Yeah. What, what is that like working with like a green screen? And I mean, do you just try to have, did they give you any idea of kind of what the visual yeah. will look like at the end? They did. Yeah. They were super helpful. Um, the director Clay Cadis, uh, is an animator himself as well. Mm-hmm. So he had these little sketches already. So he would show us, you know, these are the guys that are going to be crawling up you, or, you know, these are the things you see. Um, and they had these really vivid kind of storyboards to, to mm-hmm. kind of really put us there. And then on the day, you just, you just really get to play. Those are those days where you kind of get to go back to, to being a kid when you, you know, just played make-believe and you would just mm-hmm. try, uh, just go all out and not worry yeah. about kind of making, <laughs> making a fool of yourself. Cause we're all doing it. Everyone right. on the whole sets like that. The, the one scene in the movie where they kind of explode, not spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, where they jump out of the present and we all start oh, you know, yeah. acting. Um, it's just absolute pandemonium. So it's just mm-hmm. people running everywhere and, you know, they're throwing sandbags at people. It's just, you know, chaos, but it was yeah. so much fun. After every take, everyone would just die of laughter, you know, and of course we're all sweating because... But yeah, it was an absolute blast. Yeah, that sounds really fun. I, was I, I, I enjoyed that movie. I thought it was very charming and had this sort of old school Christmas magic sensibility that you don't see as much anymore because they are sort of focusing more on the rom-coms most of the time. But yeah. it was fun to have like a old fashioned Santa well, yeah, movie. And it, yeah, and it's produced by uh, Chris Columbus who did, you yeah. know, classics like uh, Home Alone, mm-hmm. Gremlins. Yeah. So well, and I liked how the 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 trolls had like they were very devious. Yeah, you know they had that like they felt almost gremlin esque. Yeah, and they all had their own little personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, they were quite funny, and some of them they had some characters that that didn't quite make the the final cut. Oh yeah, he had little. They would all have these different personalities, but some were maybe a little too risky, and and you know some of them had little kind of weapons that they would attack us with and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I think some yeah. didn't maybe uh <laughs> the, the christmas test but uh oh yeah. yeah but uh yeah it was it was such it was so much fun to do and maybe they saved those for the sequel yeah totally yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you've done a couple superhero shows hmm. batwoman titans a few things like that what are those kind of shows like to to film 
Uh, they're all so, so different. So say one like uh, Titans was an interesting one because um, uh, again, I guess, spoiler alert, but my character meets his demise at the end and they had to make an entire prosthetic of, of my body. So like my oh, whole, wow. my whole basically upper torso uh, and it looks exactly like me, but that was the first time I'd ever have to, had to go through the process of getting completely encapsulated basically in, in plaster with this rubber on it. And you've got to sit there for like, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half while it sets, you know, Wow. and they've got to pry it off you, but you end up with this exact replica of yourself, which is so, so weird. I mean, I, I have, fo- if you go to my Instagram, you can see me posing with it and things like that. I was trying to figure out, I was trying to ask the guy if I could like buy it off him at the end. Cause I'm like, what are you going to do with my head? Yeah. Like, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, no, like, I guess there's, they're not quite allowed to do that. Oh, and, bummer. Yeah. I don't think my wife would <laughs> love, like my torso, just with, my face is all ripped off and, you know. Although you could use it for a great, uh, a great, uh, like haunted house. Thing. Totally. Oh, yeah, I would for Halloween. Would best in Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but things like that were a lot of fun. And again, yeah. I, there was a bit of CGI where, you know, I I fight this this character, uh, Raven, and there's this thing where she, you know, uses her powers and kind of shoots me up the wall. And and that was a lot of fun because you get kind of rigged and you get, you know, thrown up against the wall and you've got to fight these again, things that you're not actually seeing. So it's it's really cool to to see the final product. Because even while I'm doing it and weeks later, I have no idea what that really looks like. I just see myself reacting to nothing. So, you know, I get to kind of learn with the viewer what that final product, yeah. is, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be kind of, that would be fun. And just to be part of, I mean, there's such iconic brands with uh, DC and Marvel and things and that just to be part of that would be very surreal, I would think. For sure. Yeah. And it, it's nice, like shows like, uh, say, Supernatural that I did. I think I did season yeah. uh, 15 and shows like that are great because they've been together for so long that it's this mm-hmm. big family. Um, it was such a welcoming cast to, to walk into. And and it was such a well-oiled machine, you know, yeah. like there's no I mean, I don't even think we ever went into overtime or anything. They just they know how to do everything. And it's just smooth, smooth sailing. All right. Take care. It was, mm-hmm. it was really nice. You felt very yeah. warm walking in, you know, mm-hmm. everyone knew your name immediately. Everyone remembered you. And so, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's those kind of ones are really nice. Yeah, I bet. That's cool. Yeah. So you have been busy at ho- over at Hallmark this year. I have. That's pretty exciting. Uh, there's, you had fit for Prince. Yes. <laughs> They're all in that one. Yes. Uh, that one is probably most memorable. I mean, we love Natalie so much. But yes. the poster for that movie was so bonkers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or, I think so, it's, it. certainly it's, it's more, it's remembered more for the, the, the crazy poster. Than yeah. the movie. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, because she's like in a giant shoe. Shoe, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love her. She's uh, She's been on our show a couple times. and Yeah, she's uh, on. Awesome. And, and she's just so sweet so nice um and then you had baby it's cold inside yes rolled in that which yes. was in may which we were very confused by we're like i guess they're just putting movies everywhere I, like, I, we shot that in the middle of of january and obviously it's a hotel made of ice it right. is the coldest i've ever been in my life yeah. we shot it in the middle of quebec city which is far colder than what Toronto gets. And I was not, I was not mentally prepared for, for how cold uh, <laughs> that movie was to do. It was a blast, but I mean, the minute they say cut, everyone's running for warmth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's gotta be a surreal experience being in that glass, uh, the ice, ice hotel really is. It, was- it didn't make you want to stay there. Uh, well, you know, we were there for well over a week. So I feel like I, <laughs> That was enough staying there for me for, for the time being. Yeah. Um, I do actually highly recommend, like I tell people all the time, like if you ever want, you know, a, a real kind of winter mm-hmm. experience, it's cool. And I mean, uh, in, like on off days and stuff, the cast would, they have these big hills where you can go sledding and all that. So we would, you know, take tubes down yeah. and 
and do all that. So it was quite a fun um, bonding experience because the whole, all the actors, all the crew stayed at the same hotel. So we all got to kind of, you know, hang out and, and bond and, mm-hmm. and, you know, so yeah, it was, it was, it was nice. Yeah. I think it would be, I think I would do better than some at the ice hotel because I am a uh, warm sleeper. Like I get hot. So I think I would do better than some, but yeah, that's gotta be a, a very hard environment to fall asleep in when you're so cold. It's uh, <laughs> very cold. Yes. <laughs> and that, that movie had a fun cast. Yeah. You're gonna be stuck uh, in a nice hotel with oh, a group. Totally. <laughs> Jocelyn oh. and Steve Lund. Yeah. I yeah. Know. Catherine was there. Yeah. It was, a. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun, it was a fun time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, then you were on the good witch. Yeah. This season. It was this last season, right? I, that's right. Yeah. 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 Um, what was your role on the, on, on the season? So I play, uh, Parker Jordan who, uh, opens a competing flower shop. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm a little conniving. Yeah. Abigail didn't like you. Not a huge fan of me. Not a huge fan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we uh, we start off on kind of rocky terms, and then uh, it doesn't get better from there. No, Uh, that must have been fun though to be part of Middleton and the Goodwood family. Again, again, kind of what I was saying before. It's really cool to to walk into a set where everybody's been working together for years, and and there's this very familial feel when you walk in, Mm -hmm. and very welcoming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was it was quite nice to to mm-hmm. shoot there, and I mean the main studio is really close to where I live, which is also a blast. To, that is nice. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, it's 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 shows that have been together that long. It's it's really nice to kind yeah. of join this world and and you know, and see all these faces that you've seen for years on TV, and hey, yeah. now I'm here and these these sets that I, I I know this set, you know. Yeah, you're like that's James Denton. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that's from Bell. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, that's the, this is the flower shop, you know? Right. <laughs> really cool to see those things. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Have you found it challenging at all with the like COVID restrictions and things like that? Like, is it, is it any harder kind of getting into your part or getting immersed in the story or any of those kind of things, you know, with shields and, and masks and all that kind of stuff that you have to deal with uh, health checks, tests, yeah. all that stuff. So it, it definitely takes a little getting used to at first. Um, my first one back, like after the initial lockdown was fit for a prince. Um, Mm -hmm. so that was the one that I kind of, that was a bit of the learning curve. Mm -hmm. Uh, You do have to get used to obviously getting tested all the time. Um, aside from that, once everything's going, it feels pretty much the same aside from that, obviously the crew and everybody's wearing masks all the time. Um, but obviously when we're shooting, we can't wear masks. Right. Uh, aside from that, it's just things like the poor, <laughs> poor makeup's got to deal with us all the time because every time you put the mask on, you you get these rings and they've got to apply makeup or or like mm-hmm. you said the shields. I'll do these things all the time where I go to drink water with my shield on and make an idiot of myself in front of everybody because I'll just bang myself in the face. 
<laughs> also, it's it's far more challenging, I think, in summer. Um, if you're someone like, yeah. like 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 you said, uh, I think you said you you sleep hot. I I tend to mm-hmm. to run pretty hot. So if it's summer and and you're all masked up and all that, it is obviously a bit a bit warm. But I've I've found that all the the sets and the crews have have obviously done their best to to um, we got to work with with the way things are, um, mm-hmm. and we all try and I think obviously be as safe as possible. But also, hey man, like at the end of the day, we're we're all here, we're working, we're we're having a lot of fun. So uh, mm-hmm. you know, and once we're there, like I I feel I've always felt safe. Yeah, um, like I say, the the testing is is so 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 often. Uh, I mean, just the fact that they've had so few shoots that have had to get closed down for COVID. I mean, almost none. I I think I feel like I've heard of a couple. Yeah. Uh, But uh, but between I mean, you're talking hundreds of shoots between the different channels. And I just hardly heard of any uh, that have. uh, And that's pretty amazing that they have managed to, to, you know, figure it out uh, that they've adapted so well. Great. I, I say I feel mm-hmm. safer on set than I do say at the grocery store. Like, yeah, I heard that from other people. Set. Yeah, we've all been tested here. I can at least know that much, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been vaccinated and tested yeah. and all that. Exactly. Well, that's great. That's yeah. really good. Well, we have a new movie coming out, Boyfriends of Christmas Past. And this one looks it it looks really fun. It looks funny. Uh, it has, you know, a sense of humor that some of these movies don't have. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and uh, what was what was that like to be part of? So much fun. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it uh, at first it was it was it was an honor. Like as, as soon as we did the the read through, I I instantly felt like I knew some of these people. I I had worked with some of them before, which was cool as well. Um, but again, uh, meeting Catherine Kim for the first time and even learning that this is the first Hallmark movie, uh, to be led by, um, a Korean American actress was really exciting. And it was, um, written by Lisa Parsons, who's also, um, Korean, which I guess is a first. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, and it was, it was exciting to, to, to be a part of something like that and to know that, that, you know, um, Korean kids are going to get to see this movie as well and see people that look like them um, as leads in, in movies. Uh, so that was super, yeah. you know, it, was a, it was a huge honor. Um, and then it was just a blast to shoot. Yeah. Uh, everybody was well, so awesome. Me and the boyfriends all, you know, yeah. the, we all bonded. Uh, again, we all, we stayed together in the same, like we all stayed in the same hotel. So we would, yeah. you know, go out for lunch together and, you know, mm-hmm go to the gym go for walks just so we all got kind of bond on our off time which was really nice Mm -hmm. well yeah this group of boyfriends i mean it is an it is a very attractive group and so like wow so congratulations i'm getting picked we want to thank you yes i'll take it yeah that's very very uh, very exciting (laughs) (laughs) yeah no it's it's a really cute cute movie um it was a lot of fun to shoot yeah. uh, super excited i haven't seen it myself so i'm yeah. gonna be watching i it. i haven't seen it either but i'm looking forward to it yeah. and i mean i am a huge kim's convenience fan like i loved that show so much and so so excited to have paul be part of the uh the hallmark family now and was he as hilarious as you hope he'd be <laughs> such a nice such yes. a nice I, I unfortunately didn't get to have scenes with him, but I, oh, I yeah. caught him in the makeup trailer. And then mm-hmm. uh, uh, the boyfriends and I were all at, at lunch one of the days when, and he came, uh-huh. we all accosted him and talked the oh, poor, nice. just poor ear off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> essentially the same what you said, how we were huge fans of the show and, you know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he, I, he's super, super nice guy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I rarely binge watch shows. I just, it's just not my style. Uh, but I, I started watching in like February, I started watching Kim's convenience because enough friends had told me yes. that, uh, they loved it. And I just, I mean, I think I went through the whole series up until that point. Cause it, it, we hadn't had season five yet. I think I went through the whole thing in like two weeks. I was I just, <laughs> I, love I loved it. it so much because <laughs> it's not only hilarious 
And it's kind of two hilarious shows in one. You've got the handy car part, which is hilarious. And then you have the family part, which is also really funny. Um, So you get two shows in one plus the like the amount of heart because in the end it's about this family and and they're trying to repair their relationships and and uh so i mean i actually think it's really hallmark friendly in that way that it's funny but it's also really endearing totally yeah i agree and and the cat was such a strong cast oh so good if people like shang chi you should definitely check out kim's convenience because simu lu is incredible in both a hundred percent. Very cool. Uh, well, we're excited for the movie and we have some fun Christmas questions for okay. the end of the interview. You ready? All right. So <laughs> what is your favorite holiday drink? Oh, uh, cocoa, eggnog, cider. So I think I have stronger. to go, I, I think I have to go with eggnog. Yeah. Sometimes we might make the egg <laughs> cider. Uh, but I think I have to go with eggnog because it's a weird yeah. drink. Like, as a kid, I never liked it. And as I got older, I came to appreciate it. And again, it's yeah. it's one of the few drinks that you only drink once a year. Yeah. I'm not even sure if you can get eggnog the rest of the year. Can you? <laughs> I don't think you can. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's yeah. for sure an acquired taste, but I think I got to go with eggnog for that. I, I used to not like it, but once I actually like diluted a little bit, Put in a little milk so it's not so yeah. thick yeah that's, i prefer it that way that makes sense <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah i think that's a logical uh <laughs> again, it's a weird drink i'm not it even really clear. Is. is there eggs in i'm not even clear to be honest it, it, yeah i think there's no, egg yolks what? yeah <laughs> so <laughs> honestly okay uh what is your favorite holiday cookie or treat oh um I think I just got to go with the advent calendar treats just because, Ooh. and again, it was a bit of a thing, I think from my childhood where every day, mm-hmm. you, got, you know, you yeah. knew you got a, a treat. I think, I think I got to go with that. And now there's so many advent calendars. It's out of control. Oh. It's like, there, there's ones with different things for each day. There's ones with, yeah. oh yeah. I just had the, there was just chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to, I used to try and sneak a couple, you know, like I wouldn't uh-huh. them all in a row. I'd, yeah. if you know, we're in the first week, I might steal like one from the 20th and one from like the side. Uh-huh. Track, I'm off. And then it's, is it one of your siblings chances to open it up? And they're like, there's no chocolate. No, I'm, I'm an only child, but I would, oh, okay. but my mom would usually, she was pretty hip to the, to the game. <laughs> I wasn't That's fooling funny. anybody. <laughs> all right. What is your favorite Christmas song or carol? I think I have to go with Silent Night. Mm. Um, it's just, one. yeah, it's it's a really nice song. Um, mm. It's beautiful. Uh, there's so many amazing versions of it. The Boys to Men version is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, originally written to be played on the guitar. Really? Yeah. I did. Yeah, not. it was. Yeah, it was written uh, in Germany. Uh, but there was a, the organ was broken in the, uh, oh. church. And, uh, so they wrote it so they could play it on the guitar. Did not know that. <laughs> yeah. True Amazing. story. The, more you know. the only reason I know that is because I was in a Christmas play when yeah. I was in high school. Yes. And it was my job to run into the church and say, the organ is broken. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. in the play? In the play. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, love it. So that was my uh, acting uh, triumph. Yeah, um, that that's the question. I, I my parents probably do. That would be yeah, hilarious. Yeah. I'll ask them. That's some extra content for the podcast. How <laughs> <laughs> to get the views, the downloads? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you sign up for the Patreon, I'll find the video. There we go. <laughs> if you're watching, listening. Yes. Sign <laughs> <Okay>. up. <laughs> uh, so, what is your favorite classic Christmas movie? this is not classic my i don't know if it's classic my favorite christmas movie is home alone for sure oh yeah yeah, yeah. i love home alone so much it's got such a big heart and it's incredibly violent so it's a perfect combination it really is there's this uh, i wish i could remember there's this thing on netflix right now where they do the uh, oh yeah you know what i'm talking about they do the yeah back- the movies that made us i think it's called yes and yeah. and 
that episode with with Home Alone was was phenomenal. I learned mm -hmm. so much about it. Yeah. Uh, made me appreciate it even more. I I didn't mm -hmm. know the, the the hurdles they went through to make that make that movie. Yeah, but I yeah. love Home Alone too. At Home Alone as well. I it was actually one of the first comedies that I really remember going to see. Yeah. I went to see it with my grandparents. Yeah. I was on a special trip uh, when I was ten. I went yeah. to see it and. Yeah. Uh, I just was dying laughing because it's such an empowering movie for kids it really is that, that, that they can like take care of things by themselves that they can, you know, take care of the house. They can fight the bad guys. Yeah, it is. As you said, it's, it's actually kind of scary. Like, you know, yeah. it, watching it as, as an adult, I'm like, this is a bit terrifying as a show, <laughs> movie, but it's, it's so endearing. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel Christmassy every time I yeah. watch it. Yeah. And underrated John Williams score. It's a good score for Home Alone. It is a good one. You've stumped yeah. me. On that. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, I think that, I think it is. So, all right, next question. Oh, Which I, thought, do you I thought you were asking me other oh, no. scores. No, I'm just saying, I, I think that Home Alone score is underrated. You don't think of that in the great John Williams scores, of course, with Star Wars and yeah, that's and right. Jones and Jaws yeah. and all that. I'm just saying, I think that that Home Alone is really good. Yeah, I, that's you. I was like ah, the best, uh, my favorite, my underrated one because I'm like all of them are so <laughs> well known. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, we could have a whole separate podcast about underrated John Williams scores. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out, like, does, so does he? Is he still scoring movies now? Is he? I, I think he's finished with star wars i i heard that but i oh. think he's still doing uh i mean he won't do this next uh steven spielberg because it's west side story uh right. but i'm sure he is, he'll still work with that's with steven his star track record is insane <laughs> yeah i mean he I hasn't understand I've never heard a bad John Williams score. No, I don't even understand how that's possible that he's yeah. he did all those. No, he's amazing. I mean, he has a whole team working with him, but still. For sure. Um, he is the king of the theme. You know, that as soon yeah. as you listen to you, you just know, yeah. oh, that's what this like, is. You can have two notes of Superman, the movie. Totally. Oh, that's what that is. Totally. Uh, Jaws, Harry Potter. Um <laughs> I still hear the Jaws music anytime I'm swimming in the ocean. If I'm out deep, I... Do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so which do you prefer, Scrooge or the Grinch? Uh, Scrooge. That'd be good. Okay, clear lights or colored? Clear lights or colored? Oh, colored yeah. lights, sure. Okay, good. Sure. All right, would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Snowball fight. All right, good. Uh, would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? Oh, I'm so bad. And like, <laughs> I don't know what's happening because I'm getting worse. Like my know. technique is getting worse. I remember being good at some point in my life, but I don't know what happens now. I don't know if I get impatient, but it's awful. I just, you know, I try and cover it up with the card. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's always the gift bag, I guess. There is, but it's really anticlimactic, right? Like the yeah. gift bag is like, oh, okay. Yeah, just pull it out and that's all. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> what What is your ugliest Christmas sweater? Or do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? I do. Uh, yeah. I, I've I've had a, quite a few over, over uh -huh. the years. But, uh, I, I have one that's just, it's green and it's got like these balls all over it, kind of sewn to it and it's got bells um it's horrendous yeah. <laughs> i used it <laughs> christmas card uh, a few years ago and I, I put my dogs in in sweaters as well and and uh they're none too impressed <laughs> yeah that sounds hilarious though i want to see that awesome. christmas card yeah <laughs> so you did it you answered all the questions <laughs> Good job. Even bonus questions. Thank uh, so thank you so much. This was so much fun to talk with you. Uh, it was great. And do you thank have you. social media you'd like to share? Yeah. So uh, at the name is Ish um, across the board. And uh, yeah, that's it. I guess tune in Saturday, eight o'clock yeah. on Hallmark or the W Network in Canada and check out Boyfriends of Christmas Past.
Yes. And yeah, make sure we'll have uh, the links to the social media in our description and make sure you're following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all over social media. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are listening or watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate that so much. We have our patron group and merch store. Take a look at that. And, uh, and you can follow me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. And thanks so much. Yes, this was great. Really enjoyed talking with you and getting to know you and uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you so much. Merry Christmas as well. I didn't wear my hat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, bye.